the 1960s were a time of drastic change. On a global scale, we experienced transitions in the leadership of our country, as well as technological achievements, such as the Apollo missions. On the local level, the FJ Wright's community saw major changes in leadership, athletics, student population, and infrastructure. During the 1960s, the world had reached a turning point. F.J. Wright's high school was not exempted from this impact, but as always, the Wright's community remained united. One of the most pivotal transitions in leadership that Wright saw was the departure of head football coach Herman Byers. Byers began coaching at Wright's in 1942 and spent nearly three decades on the Hill until his retirement following the 1968 football season. His accomplishments include, but are not limited to, coaching his boys to eight undefeated seasons, six state titles, and the undefeated and unscored on team of 1961. The 1961 team held the sixth state title under Byers' direction and is still regarded today as one of the greatest football teams Wrights has ever seen. After 1968, assistant coach Bob Padgett was chosen to fill the monumental shoes of Herman Byers. In Padgett's first season of coaching, he led the Panthers to a winning season with a record of 8-1. and one. Off the football field, Wright saw other significant coaching changes throughout the decade. After the 1963-64 season, head basketball coach Bob Gillum was reassigned to the newly opened Harrison High School to serve as freshman basketball coach. Assistant coach and 1940 Wright's graduate Jim Barnett was named head coach. Barnett led the Panthers to five city championships, three sectional titles, and a regional title. In the era of single-class basketball, teams played sectional and regional championships without divisions, depending on size. At this time, teams had their own designated sections of seating at Roberts Municipal Stadium, where they would often play in front of sold-out crowds. The 1968 varsity basketball team held a city championship as well as both a sectional and regional title. Barnett ended the decade with a city championship. As the era of Title IX began approaching the Wrights community, the female population gained greater access to activities at Wrights. Louise Owen, a PE teacher at Wrights since 1961, was the first woman to coach a boys team in the EVSC in 1965. She grew up with a love for tennis, played her whole life, and was eventually named a state and city champion in the sport so it was only fitting that she coached Wright's boys' tennis team. In Owen's first year of coaching, their team compiled an undefeated record. Towards the end of the decade, Owen stated that she began seeing more young women gaining interest and participating in interscholastic sports. The school experienced changes in leadership outside of athletics. While the school entered the 1960s under the authority of Principal Neil Pierce, the decade provided leadership opportunities that would eventually give rise to Pierce's replacement, Dallas Chastain. Chastain began his administrative duties at Wrights in the early 1960s when he transitioned from guidance counselor to assistant principal. The residing assistant principal, Wayne Weller, had passed away due to injuries he obtained in a car accident. Later in 1967, Chastain was appointed principal of the summer high school. These promotions in leadership acted as stepping stones to Chastain's final position as principal of rights when Neil Pierce retired after the 1969 and 70 school year. As chaos unfolded in Vietnam, young adults across the country began to speak out against the war. While dissatisfaction with the war was evident throughout the country, local support for those serving overseas was strong. Many of Evansville's local high schools participated in various activities to gather and send goods to troops fighting in the war. Wrights held a drive to collect Kool-Aid packets to make drinking water more pleasant for soldiers. In 1969, Wrights' junior class began selling buttons for 24 cents, laden with the words, Peace, Please, in hopes of discouraging violence in the midst of a tempestuous war. With the Vietnam War starting in 1965, Many Wrights graduates were at the age to serve in the war before the decade's end. Jerry Marvel, a Wrights graduate of the 1950s, served. In 1968, his aircraft was shot down and he was taken as a prisoner of war. He spent the next five years in North Vietnamese prison camps before returning to Evansville in the early 1970s. Another Wrights graduate, Doug Harp, enlisted to serve in Vietnam. 
Harp was known for playing on the 1961 football team that won the city championship under the leadership of Herman Byers. At 25 years old, in 1968, Harp was killed under hostile fire at Quang Tri, Vietnam. At a time where morale was low in the United States, the rights community made continuous efforts to help the war through fundraising, donations, and heading overseas to fight. During the 1960s, while America struggled with chaos in Vietnam, the country also faced serious problems within its borders. At this point in history, racial tension was strong, with leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks fighting against the Jim Crow laws that allowed separate but equal facilities between races. The number of African-American students at Wrights began climbing after Evansville's only African-American high school, Lincoln High School, closed in 1962 because the desegregation of schools meant that there was no longer a need for a separate school for children of color. The school underwent a three-phase renovation project to accommodate the rapidly increasing student population. The first phase involved remodeling classrooms and the gymnasium, costing nearly $1 million. Phase two produced the tunnel behind the school as a byproduct of an auditorium renovation. The stage was extended over the road behind the school to give performers more room during their shows. Concrete flooring was put into place, a balcony was added, and new seats were installed. The last phase of the massive project entailed remodeling classrooms and the cafeteria in the oldest sections of the building. The greater space in the auditorium paved the way for elaborate productions, such as the 1961 production of Mr. Roberts, and also the 1965 production of The Wizard of Oz. Wrights welcomed outsiders for the first time after the auditorium remodel to watch their play Mr. Roberts, directed by Don Eisler. The new auditorium could hold up to 964 people, and nearly 300 students contributed to the production, both on stage and off. The 1965 production of The Wizard of Oz was directed by Eva Katal, an English teacher at Wrights and prominent member of the drama community. She began directing theater at Wrights in 1964, so The Wizard of Oz was produced during only her second year as director. For this particular show, the setup was unique. The cast created a wooden walkway from the back of the auditorium to the stage as their yellow brick road. The 1965 production of The Wizard of Oz is still regarded as one of the best of the decade and was even done again nearly 50 years later. The decade produced tragic losses that America can never forget, such as the assassinations of John F. Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert F. Kennedy. On the Hill, the rights community experienced their own losses in leadership. The year 1962 was particularly devastating after Wrights unexpectedly lost two staff members. On November 10, 1962, Wrights' assistant principal, Wayne Weller, was driving down Waterworks Road on his way home from visiting his mother. He pulled his car to the side of the road and was hit by a 15-year-old, Marshall Liley, who was driving without a license. On November 24, 1962, he passed away. Earlier that year, Wrights lost assistant football coach Alan Horn to a heart attack. Horn was only 37 years old when he passed and unexpectedly left behind two young sons and a wife. He came to Wrights in 1947 to coach the freshman football team while finishing his degree from Indiana University. In 1948, he began coaching alongside Herman Byers, helping the team to get to six state championships. Horn's death sowed the seeds for one of Wright's most prominent organizations, the R. Men's Varsity Club. Shortly after his death, members of the Wright's community, including Jim Barnett, Russell Hicks, and Bob Hubbard, established the R. Men's Varsity Club to honor Horn by creating a scholarship for students, named the Allen Horn Memorial Scholarship. Another main goal of the club was to generate enough money to support Horn's two young sons, Pat and Mike, through college. The first cookout organized by the R Men's Club was held in the summer of 1962. They showed football films and made food, hoping to raise $2,500 for the Horn Memorial Scholarship. The 1960s were a time of tribulation and triumph on a global, national, and local level. Through it all, the rights community held its composure and has not since wavered, even over half a century later.
This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.